Hello everyone out there in internet radio land. Welcome to episode 52 of the Five Point Podcast. Are we Excuse sure me? this is 52? Episode 50, it's 53 of the Five Point Podcast. God damn it, I'm out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys! That's the best way to open. <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about or what we are doing. Yeah, you know, I thought, hey, that sounds kind of weird. But I'm sure Bobcat knows what he's doing. He did! <laughs> I, I did catch myself right away. I will just say that right now. I did catch myself right away. Oh. So, on Schrodinger's episode. <laughs> Welcome to the Five Point Podcast, where every other week we look at the first three episodes of an anime to help you decide if it is worth your time. I, I would normally make some disparaging remark, but just, oh my lord. <laughs> we just got done talking about how many episodes we had. I know. Uh, anyway, this week, Captain Earth. Yay! He's our hero! Yeah, let's just jump right into first impressions. Occasionally, we will pick out a show entirely because of its name, with absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of it. Uh, this is one of those times. I was really hoping there'd be pollution villains. There were. I not. know. I was. I was disappointed that it wasn't a Captain Planet remake in anime form at all. That would be amazing and beautiful, and probably also kind of horrible. Oh yeah, because you know that it wouldn't be because somebody in Japan had watched it as a child and liked it. No, it'd be because Ted Turner said, "I want to try it again." Sure, it lost money the first time around, but the environment. <laughs> Those Japanese people, they like crap, right? Well, and also, them kids like anime today, right? It's it's 2007, anime... Do, it's still 2007, right? When anime dominates the American TV landscape. <laughs> I hope that never fails. Yeah, that's kind of our mutual first impression. Yep. I didn't even know there was a giant robot. I knew it from the poster, but... I, there was a part of me that deep down was hoping, come on, Captain Planet combined with Get a Robo. Come on, Captain Planet combined with Get a Robo. We were both very disappointed and very enthralled. Yes. So let's get into point number two, the actual premise of the show. It's Dragonauts, but better! It's Dragonauts, but better. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> for, the, for those of you who have never seen Dragonauts, and I certainly don't blame you, uh, congratulations, keep doing what you're doing. Yes. Uh, so this is the story of a young boy whose father died in space, who discovers that there are conspiracies and aliens, and he gets to pilot a giant robot to try and sort that out. He also gets to be reunited with childhood friends who are some kind of alien, question mark. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's it. A rainbow alien. Rainbow aliens, yes. He makes rainbows. So, Told you we'd get into that yaoi. Burke, that only makes sense that they just watched the uh, <laughs> I know! video. <laughs> uh, we just finished re recording the new introduction video that's on the website. Uh, we discuss boy love. Somehow, in our introduction video. Uh, the best part is I didn't even bring it up! Yeah. Anyway, um... So point number three, story and characters. All right, so first off, the reason we compared this to Dragonaut is that it's like somebody took the script from Dragonaut and said, wow, there's a lot of extraneous bullshit here. <laughs> uh, let's just toss all that out and remove dragons because dragons always make anime worse somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Replace that with giant robots and... Throw in some actual good character moments. Yeah, that sounds about right. Also, actual main character. Holy crap. Yes. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about our good buddy Daichi, because the way... The, the, okay, there's a couple different styles of, of show. By which I mean, if you're going to have a large cast, there are a couple ways to introduce them. One is the gradual method, where... Oh, just to give an example. Original Sailor Moon. You have a lot of Sailor Scouts. So the first couple episodes, you just have Sailor Moon running around with her cat, having wacky shenanigans by herself. Yeah. Then once you've established that, then you add Sailor Mercury to the mix. Then once you've gotten that character dynamic dynamic down, 
you had Sailor Mars, and so on and so on and so on. Because this was still at the point where anime could be as long as it wanted to be. Yeah, unless your name is One Piece or, or Naruto. Or Saint Sia for some reason. I guess if you aren't a shounen anime at this point, um, with a with a very strong manga behind it, you aren't allowed to be very long. Or Saint Sia for some reason. <laughs> we'll um, be getting that one later, folks. Yes. Uh, so let's... This, is, this show does not take the gradualist approach. This show goes for the alternate thing, which is we'll establish our main character, we will have a lot of things going on, and we will be gradually filling in your massive gaps in your understanding of the world. Yeah. And we do mean gradually. Right. Uh, one thing you can say about the show is that it is... I actually would say that we know about as much as what's going on as Daichi does. Actually, no. We, we know more than Daichi knows about what's going on, but we don't know how it fits together any better than Daichi does. Which is kind of amazing. Yes. Uh, so we keep saying the name Daichi. Daichi is our main character, who is... In we... possession of some actual balls. Yes. Uh, but what I was actually going to say is that he is a Japanese teenager, because, of course, you can't have an anime about anyone but a Japanese teenager. Unless it's the hypothetical sequel to Heat Guy J, Coyote Ragtime Cho. Yes. <laughs> that show will never not confuse me. <laughs> Actually, yeah, th this is definitely in... Actually, I think this is a lot like Coyote Ragtime Show. It's the same style. We get dropped into the middle of a situation, and we are slowly having our knowledge of the world built. Yeah. So Daichi's dad died in a space explosion when he was about six or so. Oh, no. Daichi also, when he was a kid, saw some strange, strange stuff at a secret government base. <laughs> uh, some guy showed him some rainbows, if you know what I mean. Then he got out of his boomerang and he, you know, really, really threw it around, if you know what I mean. And then he polished his Burke, pearl, if that, you know what I mean. Burke, the boom, the boomerang, that is a terrible entendre. I'm sorry, it just is. Uh, it's a terror tundra. Uh I am not ashamed. What, what's kind of interesting about Daichi is that he didn't, in retrospect, seem to think anything was weird about the fact that he saw a little girl in a giant sphere, naked... He was totally cool with this. He's I, the best kind of person. <laughs> it's like, yeah, government base that the guy, that my friend, who has seems to have superhuman strength and rainbow powers, let me into. I am cool with that. But that was ten years ago. Now we're in the present, where he's kind of mopey. Kind of sometimes. It depends. Also, he has two best friends and some girl who really likes him. They do not matter. At least they haven't yet. I talked with somebody who's seen ahead in the show, and they haven't shown up yet either. Ha <laughs> I, ha! I just, I looked at that one, like, sort of red-headed girl. You know, the one that was all over him. Yeah. And the moment I saw the girl in the bubble, I went, Oh God, you're screwed, and not in the good way. <laughs> yeah, you are doomed. Th this, is his, this is truly his main love interest right here. Uh... Now, if only we could stop seeing her naked. Yeah, so Daichi, his dad is dead. He's told that his dad was a great captain. Not the Japanese equivalent of captain, just he was a great captain. Yeah. Daichi breaks into that base where he met the two aliens, question mark? Finds someone else the show refuses to acknowledge. I think that she is the spirit of the gun, all Linkara's magic gun from his show. <laughs> I have no idea. I guess. But yeah, when, when he wakes up, he has a gun in his hand. And unlike most times when you wake up randomly in a military base with a gun in your hand, this time it doesn't end poorly. <laughs> yes. A, a nice old man says, hey, do you want to fly a robot? <laughs> <laughs> the way that your dad did. Uh, there's some chicken outer space. I don't think you've seen Frozen, have you? No. She's got really big boobs. Yeah, um... We have a pink-haired girl! Hooray! Yes, we can has pink-haired girl. She also has a giant rack, and I'm really hoping she's supposed to be an adult. It's I hard think she to tell. is. But that's not... Okay, like, you'll notice that our description of events is kind of disjointed. <laughs> that's because the way the events are presented is kind of disjointed. <laughs> 
Again, we know roughly as much about how everything fits together as Daichi does. There's conspiracies, there's alien invaders from space who don't look alien in the slightest and seem to have totally human support crew for their giant robot attacks. Holy, holy crap, you know what I just realized? Hmm. All the normal people have fairly realistic hairstyles and hair colors. Sort of. Yeah, it's only the aliens who are weird. Yeah! I guess that's why they're aliens. Apparently there's a planet anime. <laughs> planet anime. Uh, oh, also, the moon has a giant pink crystal sticking out the back. Yeah, this this is a weird show. And How did no one notice that? I don't know. I, I just don't. <laughs> I mean, it... Again, everything we're saying here makes this sound like it's kind of a bad show because we're confused, but it is more entertaining than it isn't. Okay, I can sum it up real quick, too. So, like, two alien kids. They're being held captive by this one super douchebag because the commander of the base doesn't have much of a spine until a kid comes into the base with a gun and then he gets a spine. Usually that goes the opposite direction. <laughs> Anyways... So, Commander Douchebag, well, I'm sorry, uh, Secret Agent Douchebag, he keeps the two sort of alien kids on pain receptors all the time. Right, they are wearing headsets that, if they do anything he doesn't like, pushes a button, they're subjected to sonic torture. Yep. So, our main character, after he gets one of these put on, leaves the area... Which, you know, means that it's hurting him all the while. Summons his gun through sheer force of will from them. And blows up their satellite dish that's making the pain happen. Because, damn it, he told them when they were six that he was going to show them his boomerang tricks. Yeah, he would. Oh, you. Uh, and then he does. Because screw you, douchey McDouche douche. That's one of those moments where I had been sure about this show before that, but really that moment set told me that whoever is writing this knew what they were doing. Yes. We very quickly get rid of that dumb plot point. And then the commander actually stands up for the kids, which is always nice. And now they're all living together, which ends predictably with one of them being naked. Oh, there's another kid. She's a magical girl, and she's not actually a magical girl. She's a... Hacker, she's got daddy issues. Yeah, this isn't a very complete thing, but I could say that it's satisfying so far. Yes. Could could be a little bit faster. It's just that lots of things that we've seen so far have question marks after them. <laughs> just, uh, just lots and lots of question marks. Like, a parent... How old are these other aliens? Because one of them killed his dad. Well, and for that matter... Are they actually aliens? Because I, I, talking with a friend of mine who had seen more of the show, apparently the two kids aren't aliens. But one of them can. One of them was recognized by the other. Oh lord. Anyways, so yeah, uh, douchey McDouche douche tricks slash convinces the main guy into going into his super banged up robot to go fight the guy who killed his dad. Of course, it's not going well because. You know, he hasn't gotten it repaired yet. So thankfully, his two friends, because they're not douchebags, show up and save the day. Yeah, and this is interesting. There's conspiracies going on. The good guys seem to have, like, what's really funny is that the different layers of Earth's defenses seem to be managed by different countries. And there seem to be some pissing contests going on about how the defense should be done and whose defense grid should be given priority. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm just assuming this, the guy over all this may actually be super evil and wants to kill most of humanity. Yes. While his robot tries to set him up with the secretary and... Man, God, there's a lot going on in this show. Yeah. And then there's the underage boobs! Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Thanks! The, uh, the one thing I have to say about the show that it loses some points on is... Okay... This is 2014, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, is it 1983 or something? This isn't 1989. This isn't 1999. This isn't even 2009. This is 2014. If you are writing a show about an alien, and the alien is a hot girl, 
and you have a scene where the hot girl alien legitimately doesn't know that she shouldn't be naked, turn in your writing license right now. You have abused a dead horse just so much. So much. Especially right after I'd been really pumped on this show after Daichi's awesomeness at the end of episode two. Yeah. That lost at points. Yeah. Phew. But thankfully it earned him back by having Mr. Rainbow save the day. Except for Daichi, I feel like we don't have enough information to go into depth on most of the characters. <laughs> but they're all promising and likable. Yeah. Mr. Rainbow's a little glum so far, but you know, he's pleasantly surprised all the same. And, well, he has been basically in slavery since he was six, so... Oh, he needs to get over it. <laughs> yeah, just because it ended yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that means it ended. That means it's over. <laughs> Slavery's over, everybody. Nothing bad ever happened. You can get on with your lives. <laughs> right? So, yeah. It's going in pleasant directions. I like the cast. The members of the cast I don't like, I'm supposed to not like them. I'm legitimately curious about where this is going and what the aliens are. The acting's pretty nice. Yeah. My my main complaint is something we could talk about in point four, production. Woo! Stock footage Yeah, so I was just about to say, so Burke, yeah, you know, I, I know I just checked, double checked this five minutes ago, but this is twenty fourteen, right? Yep. So not two thousand nine, not eighteen. 80 anything so really sh the show abuses us a bit with a really long transformation sequence i don't know it's a co okay here's how it works as far as i can tell he has a tiny robot that then combines with a bunch of other stuff to make a bigger robot it the scene goes on too long i thought that they were gonna just gonna show it once and be done with it that would have been nice because you know it's a very elaborate system they've devised in fact, I would go so far as to say it's an overly elaborate system that they've devised because yeah. there's so many ways that could go wrong. Considering you have to get three space stations perfectly aligned with each other, and he has to launch from the Earth going straight up. <laughs> I, I, I guess these people have never seen any of the documentaries about getting to the moon and how many variables there are with space travel in general. Also, oh god, the fuel. Yeah, it's... Uh... Logistic nightmare. But that's a... It's a relatively minor thing. Um, again, this is sort of related to the show's slowish pace. Mm -hmm. I, there's just a lot of fat that they can trim. There is. Which is, which I think of... Which the reason I put that in production and not in, in um, story and characters is because... I think of this as more as being pacing rather than actual plot. Yeah. Um, as far as music goes, um, yeah. it's all right. It's kind of generic. Doesn't have a yeah. whole lot going on. Uh, the pacing of the show is weird. The fights don't take that long at all in any of the episodes so far. The build-up to them is just very slow. This is not a high-energy anime. Right. I actually find myself enjoying the stuff where it's the characters on the ground way more than the space fights, even though I feel like that should be the opposite. The space fights aren't that interesting, though. Nothing's really happening. The robot himself does not have a very unique design. The alien robots don't have that great of a design either. The only thing that was even slightly interesting, which could be secretly awful, depending on what age the girl was supposed to be, is the fact that apparently pink-haired girl decides, yeah, I'm going to steal Kim Kardashian's outfit for my space suit with my boobs hanging out, and they're going to, like, bounce every time I even flinch. Um, this combined with Alien Girl doing her, where can I get a towel, I say, not covering myself up in the least, because apparently this anime is a leftover script from 1993. Jesus Christ. You know what? We're going to have to do a review of a fan service anime. That actually wants to be a fan service anime. Yeah, none of this slipping it in where it doesn't where it isn't wanted. I think I have just the thing. Right, but yeah, so um, the acting's pretty good. Yeah, um, it, this is actually being simulcast on Crunchyroll, so there is no dub as as yet. Hey, if there ever is one, we'll make a special point number six video. 
Probably not. <laughs> oh, sudden. Hey, we, we've talked about going back and looking this up before, but we never have, so why make promises we can't keep? Hey, we, we can always do that with God only knows. I suppose, but I'm just saying, let, let's not promise the moon. Let's... But the moon has a giant crystal in it! <laughs> exactly. All the more reason not to promise it. Do you know how much that would be worth on the open market? About as much as that fuel. <laughs> but th apparently this thing runs on water because, my god, so much fuel. So much fuel all the time. Uh, what's that? Months between prep? Years, even? No. Just days. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, pr from a production standpoint, this is a good-looking show. I'd actually go so far as to say very good-looking show. The that which just makes the stock footage stand out all the more. Yeah, and that's really all I have to say about that. Do you have anything to add? That's about it. So point number five, final thoughts. Yay! Burke, you want to go first? Oh, I can sum it up like this: I might actually be watching more of this. This was a fun show. It was very slow pace, but the main character is actually interesting. The side characters aren't useless, and the ones that are don't appear after the first episode. And it has an interesting enough uh, mystery going on. The only issue is, dear God, please, stop with the underage nudity. And stop with that transformation sequence. We understand how the elaborate setup of the robot works now. You really don't need to burn the minutes. You are a slow enough show as it is. Yeah. And I'm going to concur with that. I could see myself continuing on with this one. Um, I, I, I would say if I was to give it a letter grade rating, it would get a C plus or a B minus. But it's a compelling C plus or B minus. Definitely a B minus. It, it loses points for things like the whole, is this 1999 thing? <laughs> on both fronts. Yes. But it makes up for it with heart, and I am actually legitimately interested in this mystery. I just wish the designs were a little bit less generic. Yeah. On the plus side, the boy alien reminds me of, the boy enemy alien reminds me of Gajiel from uh, Fairy Tale, and I, he was always one of my favorites, so <laughs> that's a plus. Uh, and I think that's about it for this round of Five Point Podcast. I'm Bobcat. I'm Burke. And good night and good luck. Go away.